you know, I've probably mentioned this before on these uh, monthly deer chores, but what I'm talking about a lot of times are what we have going on. And, um, and that helps it too, because that keeps it fresh from year to year, because for, depending on the year, for example, in June's previous with a lot of younger switchgrass, then we're mowing a lot again in June, where this year we're not mowing any in June. We mowed most of our switchgrass in May that was young. The older stuff we let go. And then there's some areas of some weeds that we'll spray with quinchloric here in the month of June, but we are not mowing anymore. And uh, water holes. We have all our water holes installed now in, in Minnesota. We have a couple to, to work out in Wisconsin, but other than that, our water holes are all installed now. So we're not getting in those, you know, we installed them in May, filled them in May, they're already done, uh, which is a really good thing. So, you know, each year we change a little bit, but I'm trying to base it off what I do so you guys can keep up. And bottom line is it'll give you a nice monthly, if you haven't ever watched these, uh, to-do list to make sure that you're on target for a great hunt and great habitat uh, going into this fall. Because a lot of times you can't make this stuff up in August. Now, especially out here, we have we do so much and the larger the parcel, the more you have to do. Uh, that's a lot of people don't understand. You're better off doing the work you need for 80 acres on 80 acres than you are 300 acres. Because you have a lot of holes in your land and you bought 300 acres, but that doesn't help you be a better deer hunter or help have a better herd if you have a lot of open timber in areas that are useless to deer and wildlife in general because you don't have the time or money uh, to necessarily take care of it. So number one, the ultimate no-till. Ultimate no-till is a process I came up with over 20 years ago, but I'm taking buckwheat and I'm planting into it early August, mid-August, late July, and I'm planting into it and I'm using that buckwheat as a smother crop. It's the only crop that really does a great job for a smother crop during the summer, meaning it totally and completely shades out the ground. It also is a great fine organic matter soil builder. I'll tell you the opposite of that is something like sorghum. Great soil builder for organic matter, but it's not fine organic matter. It takes years to break down. Corn, great builder of organic matter and soil, but it takes years to break down. When you're breaking that down, it takes lots of nutrients to do so. So it actually is taking from your soil as it's breaking down and becoming part of the soil. I hope that makes sense. So buckwheat is fine organic matter, deteriorates quickly, and it creates a great crop that you can actually smash over. We use a Packer Max. We love our Packer Max. In fact, we're getting a six foot one here pretty soon. They're upgrading from four foot to six foot. We're supposed to get that anytime. I can't wait. Pretty cool. Pretty cool, right, Dylan? That's very cool. Way more <laughs> so, efficient. Way more. 33% <laughs> more efficient. Yeah. Well, and you look at it, we have about 17 acres of food plots here. So yeah, we'll, that makes a big difference. we'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> and then another three in Wisconsin. So uh, we'll enjoy that that greater width. But bottom line is Packer Max, it's very efficient for us. But ATV tires, truck tires, I wouldn't advise it. But you can smash buckwheat down with it. You can just drive over it over and over again to smash it all down. Where rye, you can't do that with most any other sorghum you can't do that with any kind of grasses you can't just run over and smash it over buckwheat you can actually mow it'll grow back but bottom line is you can crimp it right over and mow it get rid of it and allows it to allows you to get seed on the soil another thing too when you're putting 50 pounds per acre which is right at what what i recommend you have one stalk every four or five inches that means there's a lot of open bare soil underneath that's full of moisture. It's almost like a greenhouse effect to where you can throw seed into it, big seeds, peas, beans, oats, rye, whatever it is, lay down that buckwheat over the top of it and it aids in, directly aids in germination. So I hope that makes sense. Whereas if it was grass, rye, it's really hard to get that seed and soil, that seed onto the soil through all that thatch and debris and garbage. So um, really makes a big difference. Uh, for what is the only crop that you can do this with we've tried it all um, unfortunately without using expensive you know crimpers tractors things like that so ultimate no-till process for me i'm planting my buckwheat in mid-june and i expect to terminate that about five weeks later i have good soil here i don't want that buckwheat to get waist high i want it to get thigh high knee high so i can actually plant into it very easily with the bigger seeds smash it all down follow up I spray it with glyphosate kill it and then I follow up with a brassica spraying. If it's a little thick, I wait a week. If it looks pretty good where I get the seed on the soil, then I'll, I'll spread the brassica at that time. You want to make just, you have to make sure your seed gets on the soil. But if your buckwheat only gets to about thigh high, that's a perfect height for being able to spread brassica into it, the big seeds, and have that perfect marriage where you get a great germination rate. Clover plots. Why clover in June? 
Well, for one, we want to have good volume going into the fall. If we plant fall clover, we can do that with our fall cool season annuals. Clover is a base. Clover comes back the following year, fills that space the following year. But if I want to have clover on some small hunting plots, which we do here, about an acre and a half out of 17 and a half acres, we want little clover hunting plots, then I want to plant that now with a cover crop of 50 pounds of oats per acre, like they do the alfalfa around here. We want to mow that those oats out when those oats are about 12 15 inches tall which is about at six to eight weeks mow it out and then we're left with pure clover so we're putting that clover down and what we've done is because we're planting this late we've been able to get two springs of 2,4-D and roundup in those areas to completely eliminate all the weeds and the weeds will come back in two months but by then the clover will have taken hold the oats are acting as a nurse crop for any kind of drought during the summertime and unless we get extreme drought we'll have a nice thick cover crop of clover of uh, attractive clover plot going into the the hunting season so we'll really look forward to that uh, at that time so great time to plant clover because we've taken care of our weeds we're using a cover crop and so when we get rain on monday like we're supposed to we'll see this time of year when it's been dry it's almost like you need rain forecast for three days in a row to get it for a half day but we'll see so we're doing that this year Blind installs, this is a great time in June to get those blinds moved around. We have big rock trees here and they're actually, we're placing uh, hybrid willows, hybrid poplars and silky willows around some of our rednecks from last year, two of them. So we can get that growth around. It's gonna be a giant bush. I can't wait to bring those to you next year because some of them right now, they're gonna be eight feet tall on some of the ones we did last year, just in one year. So you're not gonna see us walk up and down these blinds in any way, we'll be completely hidden. And then the blind itself will be completely hidden just for deer looking at it. So we're filling in a couple of those this year, right now this month. And then also moving some of those rednecks and some of the blinds that we have to get them into place, let vegetation grow around them, let our screening, our deer fence that we sell on WHS Wildlife Plans take shape and take hold. So it's a great time to get those in place right now so they're well hidden by fall so you can have a better hunt. So a really good time as opposed to waiting until August, September and or November 14th like a lot of people in Michigan before the gun season opener. Quinclorc. Quinclorc is a great herbicide that kills a lot of different types of weeds. And this is a really good time to do so with the switchgrass. We've mowed it in May. Now we're going to see what we have. We'll see how that responds. Some areas I can already tell responding, they're just exploding. The switchgrass is gonna take over. Cause now we've set the weeds back. The switchgrass is growing faster than the weeds at this time. So now, two weeks from now, it's gonna be pure switchgrass. We'll just look at it, it'll be all switchgrass. It'll be beautiful. But there's other areas where we have burdock and other forms of, uh, another one, uh, foxtail is a really bad one. And that starts to take shape later. So we'll see that by mid-June to end of June, and that's when we'll spray quinclorac on it um, for that first year switchgrass, meaning this is the second growing season. It's planted a year ago. That'd be 4.5 to 6 ounces per acre. And uh, we'll bump that up to 6 to 8 ounces per acre if it's more that two-year-old switchgrass or older. But bottom line is, is that month where we want to hit that, take it out. We want to get it out of here pretty soon, so when we have our charity event for Camp Kicking Bear on June 18th, the Habitat Day, guys, check that out. I'll put a link in the description for that, but I um, urge you to check that out. We still have some open spots. It's $350 per person. Uh, kids can come for free. We already have over 20 kids, I think close to 30 kids, signed up for the event. And so all the money we raise for that doesn't go to me or WHS. It goes to Kicking Bear every cent and then plus some. So we donate a lot of our own money and time to make this happen, let alone all the money that you give and the people that come. And, and we have a hunt raffle, 100 spots, $100 a piece. And that's for a three-day hunt at the end of September. We've had a great time with those hunt winners the last two years. And we look forward to this third year too. And um, all that money, that 10,000 goes straight to Kicking Bear. So it's a big event, check that out. That's a big thing we have doing in June. I, in, in June, I should have added that right here, but um, we want everything looking pretty for that event, and, and you can bet we'll do our best. And Quinn Clark's part of that. We want those weeds out of those switchgrass plots. Deer trail cams. What I mean by that is this isn't turkey cams. This isn't antler cams where we want to see what antlers are left in the winter time, what turkeys are around and toms and where. This is by the end of June, you should be able to identify mature bucks on your property from the year before. And again, I talk about all the time. We have video out too that that's one of the checkups on your land is you should have very, very few random bucks that you get pictures of. 
I've heard people say, well, you could have 50% rain to bucks in your property every year, that's expected. No, that's on a poorly managed property. If you manage your property well, then you're going to have deer that you recognize to at least 90, 95%, especially those older bucks. So if you look at it and say, well, man, I don't, I don't recognize a lot of these bucks or random buck pictures, that's not a really good thing. Because if that's the case, you're spooking deer off, you don't have that property that attracts deer for the entire fall, probably because they're spooked off, your stands aren't working for you, your camera locations, so it's not working all together for you. But when it comes to June, this is the time we get all of our cameras, our entire arsenal of reveals out to let us know where the deer are at, what the bucks are looking at, what they're growing to this year. We have some four, five, and six year old bucks. We can't wait to see what they look like because they make big jumps during those years. They turn into some monsters. So we can't wait to see what they look like. But bottom line is we're getting them out right now in June. This is finally where it almost feels like you're getting into the part of the season because they change so much. Really, by the end of June, do you realize there's only about six weeks of antler growth left? Right, Dylan? About yeah. August 10th, August 12th, August 15th? Yeah. Somewhere around there. So when you get to the end of June, it's almost over for antler growth, considering the entire year, only six weeks. So really crazy when you think about it. Tree stands. I put a big question mark on that. Why? Because we have a lot of stuff to do in June. So I'm working on my tree stands last. You know, we worked on water holes. We've mowed switchgrass. We've killed our food plots. We've sprayed food plots early with Simazine. Our water holes are full. We have four new water holes installed. We've already put cameras out. We have mock scrapes that we've created, new ones. Dylan and I just worked one on today with a new camera setup. We've expanded food plots. We've done so much on the land and I know I'm missing a whole lot, but bottom line is, oh, we're installing circles right now with uh, big rock trees of uh, diversity pockets. There's just a lot we've done this year and, uh, and we have a lot to do in June. So if we have time towards the end of June, we'll start working on our tree stands, but that might end up being a July thing, which it often is. We're often working on tree stands in July and it's hot and buggy, it's muggy. It's not a great time to be working on stands, but it's a good time as it relates to every other chore because you can work on those stands in July get them established, cut some stuff. By the time you get into late September and October, those deer are none the wiser. So no reason to rush that chore when you have all these other chores to do that take place and uh, take priority before that. And finally, as Dylan reminded all of us and myself, to shoot your bow. Uh, June is a great time to start getting familiar with the bow and shoot it heavily through July, August, September, and then into the deer season and not starting in September to do so. So it's really good to start early. You know, it's one thing if you're shooting a lot of leagues and you're shooting off season, you're shooting January, February, March, April, May, June. I used to do that all the time for years and years and years. But when you start shooting your bow in June and you start really shooting three or four times a week, you'll feel great by the time you get to hunting season. So don't miss out on that. Don't feel like you have a lack of confidence going into hunting season. You can build that confidence for right now. It really starts right now. So hope you guys are on track for June. We are. That's why I'm not sure on those tree stands, though. I'd like to get some of those done in June, but July especially. Watch for those ants. I haven't noticed this with the reveal cameras, but some trail cameras, if you have mic holes, the ants can get in the camera and destroy your cameras. We would always put a strip of duct tape to cover up the mic holes. We don't have to worry about that with our reveal cameras that I've seen in any way yet. But uh, bottom line, this is a great time for ants, too, so make sure you take precautions for that for your trail cameras. Great time to really start thinking about the deer season. I know we're getting excited about certain setups we have, brand new water hole setups, the switchgrass we have for screening now that's actually gonna be full and seven, eight feet tall this year. We can't wait, I hope you guys can't. I'm actually starting to get excited for the season when I think about it. We are start talking about harvest goals, what we wanna shoot this year and when, and uh, it's right around the corner. It literally is right around the corner, especially when you think the end of June, Bucks only have six weeks of antler growth left. Um, it's really getting close, and I hope you guys are on track for this fall. Now, I don't know if you've checked out our main website lately, whitetailhabitatsolutions.com, but we've really had a lot going on, including hats, books, our web class, and certainly our new seed company, WHS Wildlife Blends. When you click on seed on our site, it'll take you right to our brand new site for the seed company. We have all 12 blends available. So check it all out though. I encourage you, I appreciate you checking it out. Whether you buy anything or not, really appreciate you visiting the site and uh, seeing what's going on and continue to watch because we have big things coming later this year.